right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you very much, Paul. Welcome, everybody, to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Josh Taylor, in tonight for Rich Walsh. Joining me in studio from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, columnist Tim Benz joins me. Hold on. I'm looking for the ball. Uh-oh. Hold on. You got it. Uh, no. I got no, it. No, got I, oh, oh, no. We oh. got it. We both missed it. That's what happens. Yeah, I, I guess it happens more often than probably should. What were they looking at? I don't know. I mean, like, I so for people who didn't see it, Jung Ho Gung and yeah. Kevin Newman, and I'm going to put this on Gung. I am, too. The pop-up against the field. Mets today was just unbelievable. Now, I, I get it. Like, that's sort of a product of the shift. Right. When nobody's shifting five years ago, ten years ago, that play never happens. But right. unless there was a stiff wind or he completely lost in the lights, there's no way that was going to be Kevin Newman's ball. Am I wrong? I, I, no, you're not wrong. How, how was that even close to being a question? I don't know. I have no answer. And how does Trevor Williams not get down a bunt? Uh, that's been a problem with this pitching staff for a while, though. If you're and the named, catchers, too, if, Elias Diaz. If you're not named Joe Musgrove, like, the pitchers really can't put bunks down. Well, yeah, and that, th that was, I guess, part of the thinking that was alarming for the Pirates, and they're trying to figure out what to do with Diaz, because oh. Diaz had never put down a bunt before, right? And hadn't Musgrove already been used? Musgrove, I think, had been used as a pinch runner, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they could, I, I don't know. I guess in that situation, you could probably use a pitcher instead of Elias Diaz, but... But you think you would know that, right? Yeah, in, in general, it's just... Today was a summation of why things have gone, or how things have gone so wrong for this team, I thought. It's the how. Like, like you, you circle had a the how. good pitching effort, or for the most part, a good pitching effort from Trevor Williams. Yeah. And Steven Matz blanks you, you know, in a, in a season where that shouldn't be happening. I think, it was a, I think it was the deepest he's gone in three years. And, and even though Williams yeah. pitched well, keep it in the yard. You know, I mean, like how you said they're last in the NL. They have given up the most home runs in the National League in the, since the All-Star break, and they've also hit the fewest. Yeah, in a park that isn't renowned, your home park, in a park that's not renowned for giving up home runs. Yeah, and they give up, what, a handful more. They gave up four more last night and two tonight in a ballpark that's really not conducive to hitting home runs either. Yeah. So there's that, too. I'm so sick of that apple. Like, you know, I was, as a pirate fan who grew up in Connecticut. Okay, fair enough. The apple was like night nightmarish for me in the 80s because that yeah. was my way to go see pirate games was to go to Old Shea. And between Strawberry and Howard Johnson and Kevin McReynolds oh. and Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter and Kevin Elster, <sighs> Kevin Elster, like used to, I, I think oh. he stayed in the majors because of his games against the Pirates. Tim Tuffle. Yes. Like the, those middle infielders that otherwise were only role players. When they would play the Pirates, they looked like all-stars. Ray just, Knight. I, Ray Knight. I had so many yeah. nightmarish experiences at Old Shea Stadium with that dumb apple popping up, and we saw it two more times today. I appreciate the trip back to my childhood with the Muck the Fets days. Those were, those were amazing times. <laughs> I'm glad you tried that on live television because I was not going to touch it. It took me a while to build up the confidence, but I was glad I pulled when it off. When we were doing trip live radio together, maybe we on gotten away with radio, it. we could have screwed it up and oh, still yeah. gotten away with it, but oh, here, yeah. probably not. We so could have totally pulled it off. I'll leave that one to you. All right, well, let's, let's jump, Steelers, because we got training camp day three. Of course, day, uh, first day of pads is tomorrow. But a couple of things. Um, T.J. Watt, of course, did not practice today. He's kind of dealing with a hamstring injury. They don't think it's a serious. It's just a precaution. But he talked about today making that switch from the right side to the left side. Clearly, he thinks he's more comfortable with it. And it, it showed some really good results last year. Yeah, and I was the one I was asking him about that because I think we all knew going in it was going to help T.J. Watt going over to his more natural side, even though he had been good the previous year on the right side. But right. You know, the hope this year, I would think, Josh, is to get more tangible benefits for Bud Dupree out of that. Um, part of the thinking in doing what they did with that switch is that Watt is supposed to be better at contain on the left side where there are more right-handed quarterbacks. You've got Bud Dupree coming from the blind side, so Watt can contain and then Bud can track him down. That was the theory. Now you've got to see that manifest and actually pay off in practice I'm sure Dupree wants to see that because he's going into his contract year. Yes, he has to. Pretty and he much. wants to see sack, not just good efforts and close calls and decent pressures, but he wants to see actual sacks. Well, let's move to the offense. You wrote um, during the week for the trip, you wrote a piece about the running game and how it needs to be a, 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 obviously on a much different level this year. Yeah, I mean, I just I want to see the running game solid early because there's a lot of moving parts for this passing game. You know, obviously you want to see the run game better because you want to see more balance with the Steelers this season. They 
attempted more throws than any other team in football last year. Yes. They had the second greatest split in run pass differential. All this with a running back who had 937 yards and went to the Pro Bowl. Went to the Pro Bowl. Um, now, there were some games where I just thought they got away from the run way too much. I would agree and even that. though Roethlisberger's a great quarterback, and you, you kind of got some truth. If you read the tea leaves a little bit with Mike Tomlin during his uh, press conference to open up the season when I was asking him about it, that they were concerned about using Connor too much, I think because of durability issues, concerns right. there, and they really didn't trust the backup running backs beside him. Jalen Samuels was not a runner. at. Any uh, they didn't have Benny Snell. They had Stephen Ridley, who just I don't think ever captured the imagination. That blew up against New Orleans. And, and he fumbled. So, yeah. you know, you've got issues there. They're always worried about his ball security. So right. with all the moving parts in the passing game this year and no Antonio Brown, uh, go back to that clutch phrase from Ben Roethlisberger after the game against the Cincinnati Bengals that they won the last week of the season. On every play, we knew Antonio Brown was the X. Yeah. They don't have that this year. True. So there's a lot of maneuverability, and that's good. So yeah. There's variance to the passing game, but that can be a solid, steadying rudder while the pass game works itself into efficiency. I want to see them rely. It's got to be multiple back spine, but I want to see them rely on the run game early. Let's talk pass game. We'll take a break. When we come back. We'll hear Ben Roethlisberger's comments regarding the pass game. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stick around. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, putting new roofs on Pittsburgh homes for over 25 years. Call Ireland Contracting at 1-800-NEW-ROOF. 